For uh, most of the diseases, the anti-angiogenic therapies uh, ha are distinguished by very low side effects, and some have none. And endostatin really has no side effects in animals or people, and we've, that's been established because some of these proteins are circulating in your body, and they're very old proteins. So we'll begin to see the drop in, uh, uh, in side effects. And then that allows one to treat cancer as a chronic manageable disease in which you could take uh, pills, for example, to keep tumors from ever recurring. And uh, so in that, in that way, uh, uh, one could um, hopefully make, make cancer uh, much easier to manage. The same with eye disease in terms of, for example, blood vessel growth in the eye is the most common cause of blindness worldwide, both in macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, angiogenesis in the cornea, and so forth. Um, and if those could be controlled by even pills of any kind or long-term maintenance therapy, uh, this may be some of the future. And I think then the the, the most interesting thing is there's a whole field of biomarkers, blood, uh, uh, blood tests that, that detect tumors very, very early, even before you can see them. And uh, as those are developed, we might be able then to merge that with the non-toxic drugs like, or low toxic drugs like angiogenesis inhibitors and begin to treat tumor, recurrent tumors before you can see them. Like we treat infection by treating the white blood count, we don't wait for the abscess to form. And finally, many other kinds of treatments, vaccines, telomerase inhibitors, immune therapy, uh, all may benefit by being combined with anti-angiogenic therapy. Uh, and uh, as this plays out, we'll learn more about it.